here are some things to keep in mind before you follow the tutorial. First of all, this only works for the iPod Touch 2nd generation MB model and the iPhone 3G. It does not work for the MC model. How do you know if it's an MB or MC? You go to your settings, general, and about, then you'll find that the model begins with MB. So this will only work for the MB iPod Touch 2nd generation and the iPhone 3G. So, first of all, you want to make sure that your computer is running Windows 7 because this will not work on Windows 10 or 11. So, assuming that most people will be watching this from a Windows 10 or 11 laptop, you're gonna have to download a virtual machine through VirtualBox to get a Windows 7 virtual machine. I've already made a tutorial on that, I'll link it in the comment section. First of all, you go to the link of the iTunes version 11.2, depending on which uh, uh, Windows 7 version you chose. If you chose a 64-bit, which I believe most people will, then you'll get this one. You're gonna click on the download button, the green download button, and then it's just gonna start installing. There it is, but I'm just gonna stop it because I already have it downloaded. Next, you wanna get an IPSW file. I provided a link for the iPod Touch 2nd generation and the iPod 3G. So you're gonna choose the latest one which is 4.2.1 8C148. You're gonna wanna scroll down and then uh, click on this download button right here. And it's gonna start installing and if it doesn't you just need to click it once again. There it is but I'm just gonna stop it because I already have it downloaded. Last but not least there's this webarchive.org link that I will provide and as soon as you enter it it's gonna redirect you to the Wayback Machine, then it, the file is gonna start getting downloaded. Now that you've got all of that done, you're gonna go to wherever you saved the Red Snow file. You're gonna right click it, then you're gonna extract all. Then here you're gonna click on extract. After that's extracted, you're gonna open the folder right here. Then you're gonna double click on Red Snow, then click run. This dialog box will show up and then you're gonna click on allow access. Before you click on the jailbreak button, you're gonna click on the extras button, then select IPSW. You're gonna go to wherever you stopped your iPod or iPhone 3G restore IPSW file, then you're gonna click on open. Then you're gonna click on OK. And since we're not using the MC model, we're gonna click no. Then you can click on back, then the jailbreak button. So this menu right here, I don't understand what custom bundle is, so I'm not gonna enable it. Install City, install Cydia, which you really need. Verbose boot, instead of getting the boot logo, you get some uh, programming looking text. It does look cool, but I don't like it. The custom boot logo, you can choose a JPEG or P PNG file. You can choose a PNG file of the boot logo, and the custom recovery logo is for the iTunes stuff. You can also change the logo, but these two, enable multitasking in home screen wallpaper, really do slow the devices down because as we know the iPod Touch 2nd generation and iPhone 3G do not support home screen wallpapers or multitasking so don't enable them. The battery percentage is very useful so I enable that. I'm gonna click on next. Now this part, you really have to be careful. So you're gonna go to your iPod or iPhone 3G, then you're gonna keep pressing the power button until you get this menu, you're gonna slide to power off. And now, here is where if you have a virtual machine, this will get more complicated, but you, if your computer is running natively Windows 7, then you won't have to follow any of these steps that I do. Now you're gonna plug the USB cable into your computer, and don't plug it to your iPod. So uh, you're gonna make sure you're ready for plugging it in and then you're gonna have to immediately click on next, plug it in and then hey, again, you're really gonna have to be fast. So I'm gonna click on uh, next, then you're gonna plug it, then press the power button. Then you're gonna press the power button and the home button for like 10 seconds. And what's, you're gonna see the screen go black. After it goes black, you're gonna release the power button, but then you're still gonna keep pressing the home button you hear a sound in the computer there you go and if you're running this off a virtual machine it won't detect it because you don't have the drivers installed if you run windows 7 natively it's gonna detect it as you can see here we got this problem so what you want to do is uh, minimize the window of your virtual machine you go to your virtual box machine settings 
right here. Then you're gonna click on USB. I'm gonna click on the USB icon with the green plus. Then you're gonna find Apple mobile device DFU mode. You're gonna add that. You're gonna click on OK. Go back to the virtual machine by clicking show. After unplugging, you're just gonna click on OK. Next, it doesn't matter, you can just leave it. And until it reaches the third part, you should uh, plug it in. Five, four, three, two, one. I'm gonna hear a sound. And there you go. Now it's gonna turn into a white screen. Again, if you have Windows 7 running natively, you won't have to follow any of these steps, but if you're running it off of VirtualBox, you're gonna go back to the virtual machine settings once again, go to USB, go to the USB plus icon, and you're gonna find Apple Mobile Device Recovery Mode. Then remove the uh, DFU mode driver by clicking on the USB icon with the X, the red X. Then you're gonna click on OK and then show, you're gonna unplug it, then plug it back. Now it's finally detected it, and you're gonna, wait. If it's stuck in this waiting for reboot and widescreen, which happens to a lot of people, even if you're running Windows 7 natively or running it off of VirtualBox, you're just gonna unplug and plug back in. And if it still doesn't make a sound, you're gonna go back to your virtual machine settings. This is for the virtual box users. You're gonna go back to the virtual machine settings and you're gonna click on USB, add the exact same driver, uh, delete the one that's not highlighted by disabling it, then deleting it, then you're gonna click on okay, then show. Then you plug, unplug and then plug back in. After you hear the sound, it's finally gonna keep uh, doing this stuff. Y you might hear this chime, and now, once you're, you see the screen downloading jailbreak data, there's a rare chance that anything will go wrong. Just make sure to keep it plugged in, and make sure that your computer is charged or else it might die and then not complete this. So you're just gonna wait for it to finish right here. Now, as they say, the rest of the process takes place on your device, so you can unplug it. Then now you're gonna get this white text, it's just gonna keep going. Again, it's okay if you unplug it from your computer, and uh, you're just gonna wait for the white text to finish, till you get a running pineapple logo. There you go, now there's the pineapple running logo, you're gonna wait for this loading bar to finish. After the whole loading thing is ready, is done you're just gonna get back the Apple booting logo and then you're gonna immediately boot to the home screen. There you go, you slide to unlock and now your home screen has Cydia which proves that it's been successfully jailbroken. You're gonna click on Cydia, I choose developer, it doesn't matter, you can choose user but I like to get access to everything so I'm just gonna click on done and uh, there you go, it's just gonna sit there and keep updating Cydia, it's gonna show you a reloading data screen and after that's done now you click on return to Cydia. And then, here you're gonna click on complete upgrade. It's the middle option right here. Then you click on confirm. Now you click on close Cydia. And there you go, your device is jailbroken. If you have any problems, do let me know in the comments. I'll try my best to solve them. Thank you guys for watching, a sub would be appreciated, and I hope this helped. Peace.